So let's start talking about our childhoods a little bit. As children, our truth was distorted not only by denying the hurts we suffered, but by a kind of permeability to the narrative force of others. Now I'm going to explain that because that's really important. See, children are really pliable. Children are really pliable. Their brains haven't fully formed yet. They're trying to figure out who all the people are and who, and who all the players are in this deal called a family and, and who's the one that's in charge that's making all the rules. And how do they fit into my life? And who are these other kids that are running around? And they seem to be kind of bossing me around. And, and so, you know, what's, what's the deal here? Now, you see, when a child comes in, and I've used this example uh, in this talk uh, or in the Meadows lecture before, when I was a young child and I fell off my bike and I skinned my knee and I was hurt and I was crying, and I came in and I told my mother, and my mother says, you know, what's wrong, what's wrong? And I said, well, I fell off my bike and I'm hurt. She would say, let me look at that. And she'd look, and she'd say, oh, that doesn't hurt. And I'm thinking, feels like it hurts. But here is this person that is supposed to love me and care for me more than anybody else in the entire world who is telling me that what I'm feeling is not reality. It is not reality. So I have to make up a whole nother story to make that work for me. Okay? Now, was it my, my mother's intent to deceive me? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. My mother was scared, number one, when I came in crying that something was really bad wrong with me. Okay? And then what she was really wanting to do was comfort me. And she did it in the only way that she knew how, and that was to deny the pain that I was actually feeling because she wanted me to feel better as quickly as possible. Now, you know, this is a... We do this all the time. I have a, a client who uh, has a 23-year-old son. Uh, who she spent time with this week and uh, out of state. And uh, he w had been dating the same uh, girl for five years. Uh, this past uh, weekend, they drove to her parents' home. Uh, he asked her father for uh, the, his daughter's hand in marriage. And the mom and dad of the young lady said, you know, we've been expecting this. We welcome you into our family. We're you know, we're really thrilled about this and we think you guys are ready. That was on Saturday. On Sunday, she broke up with him. He was devastated. He was sobbing. He was heartbroken. He, he was in so much pain, he, couldn't, he could barely even catch his breath. And so his mother says, I'm on my way. And so she went to, to be with him. And she said, you know... Kelly, the, the hardest thing in the world for me was to not say to him, you know, a year from now that you're not even going to remember this. You know, you're better off without her. But what she did was she honored his sadness. You see, we've got to live in our truth. When we're sad, we're sad. Let's just be sad. We don't know how to just be who we are. We're always trying to be something else. At my father's funeral, I walked out of the church with a smile on my face, shaking hands with people as I left the church. Was I in touch with my feelings? No. I wouldn't have known a feeling at that very moment if it had come up and slapped me in the face. Because I thought that's what I was supposed to do. I thought, I'm going to be the strong one. I'm going to be the one who's able to carry the load of this family. I was 23 years old, y'all. I didn't know what I was doing. But I'd never been told that it was okay to live in my own truth. The way our parents, siblings, teachers, and other caretakers, I think that's an interesting word, this author used the word caretakers rather than caregivers. Isn't that interesting? 
I'm real careful about using caregiver or caretaker because I want to be a caregiver if I'm dealing with my children or my grandchildren or my wife or anyone that I love, I want to be a caregiver. The way our other caretakers interpreted or spun the meaning of the events unfolding around us influenced the way we came to understand them. We echoed or mimicked their perspectives because we wanted to rely on them and participated in a shared experience with them and because we were still learning about ourselves and the world we live in. When, when we are experiencing something for the very first time, I, or I, let me change that. When I am experiencing something for the very first time, a lot of times I will look for clues and cues from the people around me who've experienced it before to see how I'm supposed to be reacting because I want to fit in. I want to be a part of the group. I don't want to be left out in any form or fashion. Children are, are more susceptible to that than anybody because everything they're experiencing is for the first time. 